Okay, this is 8.2 notes. It's estimating mu when the standard deviation is unknown. So what I'm hoping for in this section, once we get through this section and we practice this a little bit, that this is going to make everything a little bit easier when we are estimating this mean. So you need to find your formula sheet for chapter 8 on your pink sheet. It's the back side of the first page. And what we're going to do now is actually find the one with a T of C. So that's the formula that I want you to try and find, the one that has T of C or a T score. Okay, and you also are going to need to have your blue table, the T table. That's what it's going to be. So what's different about this section than section one is that our standard deviation is actually unknown. And this is what's going to happen more times than not. Because how often do we actually know everything about a population or the standard deviation or the spread of it? Okay, so more times than not, we're going to have to take a sample and get a general idea of what's happening. And since we do that, we aren't allowed to use the normal distribution anymore or our Z tables. Okay, we are going to have to use the student T distribution. It's a little bit different of a distribution. Okay, now the only thing that's really different to find the actual T value is that we use the sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation. Okay, it's just that this, use, this will be used a lot more often as we continue on. So usually both the mean and the standard deviation are unknown. Okay, you're not always going to be able to have a large sample size in order to, to get it. So we're going to assume, you have to assume or be told the distribution is still normal or you need to have a sample of more than 30. But in every one of these problems in this section, you're going to be given an X bar, a sample mean, a sample standard deviation, and a sample size. And that's how we're going to proceed. Just a few uh, general guidelines about a T student distribution. It's just we don't know as much about the distribution. It's not as simple as being normal. So the curve is going to be flatter. It's going to be spread out more. There's going to be more data farther away from our mean. We're going to be we're not going to be able to make as specific or accurate um, descriptions because it's not normal. So what we need to include then is what we call degrees of freedom. And this is also on your formula sheet. You're going to see a degrees of freedom. It says with d dot f equals n minus 1. Okay, That will be used every time, and I'll show you how that works. Like I said, the, the curve's just a little bit flatter. And as the number increases, the, the tails do get narrower. The more, essentially, the more data you have, the more accurate or closer to normal it is. So let us try find a confidence interval. Now this is exact same thing as what I talked about in section 8.1. We're going to have a confidence area, 90%, 95%, and we want 95% of our data between some magical value, a distance from the mean, a essentially a t-critical value is like a z-critical value. It's the number of standard deviations away from the mean, and that's what we're going to use to find our error. Okay. Now, how a t-table works, everybody should grab their blue chart. What you need to do, there's a lot of information, and there's going to be a lot of information used throughout the next two chapters. What you need to focus in on, on the top row, is the confidence level row, which is the bottom one of the three. You see a one-tail area, two-tail area. So there's one tail, two-tail with numbers in it. We don't worry about those now. That'll be next chapter. We want the C1, which is the bottom row, where it has 50, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, all the way up to 90, and then 0.999. That is the column, or the row, excuse me, the row that you are going to look at every single time. And then it, the, the problem itself is going to say, okay, a 95% confidence interval. So that's why we'll look in that column. And then let's say we have a degrees of freedom of 7, and I'll dis discuss what that means. Here is going to be your T sub C, your T critical value. That's your magic number. And that's what we want to do. If your N or degrees of freedom is not on the chart, you must go to the number that is smaller. Okay, and I will show you an example of that as well in the second example that we have. All right, now to get this confidence level, this confidence interval, excuse me, this formula, this error formula that we talked about, okay, is showing up again, except what's the only thing that's different from 8.1? Instead of a Z score, we had the Z sub C, it's now a T score. Instead of the population standard deviation, it is now a 
sample standard deviation. Really, there's not much different to this error. And there isn't much different to build the interval either, because you take your mean and you subtract the error, take the, the mean and add the error. So there isn't a whole lot different. It's just now we do not know the population standard deviation. It's unknown. So what we need to do is find a sample standard deviation, or be told that, and then we can proceed. OK, so let us kind of give you a broad overview. So dot, 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 do you know the standard deviation for the population, the Greek letter sigma? If you say yes, all right, if you say yes, it was given to me, this is section 8.1, all right? And you go back to use the normal curve. You have a z-score, the population standard deviation. If you say no, if it's not there, this is section 8.2. All right, and then we go to the t-distribution, your blue table. You'll have degrees of freedom be involved, x-bar and sample stuff. Sample means sample standard deviations, things like that. And this is going to be your new error formula. And then in either case, that error will be put into your formula, and you will build your confidence interval, and then you write your statement. So it's just a matter of, do you know the population standard deviation or not, is what you have to ask yourself. So I'm going to give you two examples, and we're going to work through them. All right. The mean weight of eight fish caught in a local lake is 15.7 ounces. Standard deviation is 2.3 ounces. Construct a 90% confidence interval for the mean weight of the population of fish in this lake. So they want you to take, using these eight fish information, we're going to build a confidence interval. Give me an estimate of what the mean is for the entire lake. Well, since I do not know anything about the population except this sample, that's why I'm using a t-critical value. Well, what do I do know? Do I know the mean of my sample? It is, what is the mean? 15.7 ounces. Do I know the standard deviation? 2.3 ounces. That's taken from the eight fish that were caught. All right. Do I know n? Well, I just said it. It's eight fish total. What is degrees of freedom? Degrees of freedom, if you look on your formula sheet, is just n minus 1. So 8 minus 1 is 7. That's going to help us find our critical value for t. Confidence interval. How confident do I want to be? A 90% confidence level. So to find this t sub c, this is important to find your error, we need to go to our t table. So what I want you to do is grab your t table. If you don't have it, there is a t table in the back of your book in the appendix, and you can try to find that. The confidence level is 0 0.90. So you need to go to the c row and find 0 0.900. That's what you need to find. So then that column going down, all right, we need to find Degrees of freedom, notice, is the, the column on the far left. You see D dot, F dot, and it's 1, 2, 3, all the way down to like 45, 50, 60 on the bottom. We want degrees of freedom of 7. So then wherever degrees of freedom of 7 is on the left, you go over 90% down, find that critical value. And in this problem, it's going to be 1.895. So everybody hopefully can find that number. And if you can find that number, now it becomes a piece of cake. All right. So what we're going to do then is you need to do two things. You need to find your error, and then you need to build your confidence interval. So my error formula says my critical value, we just found it, 1.895. My sample standard deviation is 2.3 divided by the square root of n, n is 8. So if you go in your calculator and you go 1.895 times 2.3 times the square root of 8, you will get an error of 1.54. So we can be 95% confident that our mean is 1.54 ounces to the left and to the right of my x bar. That's kind of the idea. So now I want to build my interval. So what is my x bar? So I'm going to try to write this right underneath. My x bar is, what is my x bar? 15.7. I'm going to subtract my error, because that's what my 
interval says. And then that's what's below my mean. And then above my mean would be the same, but add the error. So all I'm doing is taking my x bar, which is 15.7, and then subtracting the error and adding the error. And when you calculate these, you end up getting 14.16. To seven, oh, 14.24. There is my confidence interval. Now, in every section in this chapter, we need to start writing what does that mean? So, what are the three things I want? First thing, and the very, very first thing I want you to do with what kind of confidence? With 90% confidence. And then what are we talking about? What are we trying to find? The mean weight of the fish at the local lake is between, and then you need to tell me your answer. What is your interval saying? Between 14.16 and 17.24 ounces. That tells me everything you did. We know the confidence. We know that we're talking about the mean weight of fish in this lake and what the interval is. So I can expect when I catch a fish, the fish is going to be approximately 14 to 17 ounces based off of my sample. All right. So here is another example that we can do. And I haven't written anything down. So you guys might want to push pause and see if you can do it yourself. But I'm going to keep going. I need to know my X bar. So they we're talking about Major League Baseball games played this year between a specific date and there's 190 games and the table tells you the margin of victory. So was it a one run game all the way up to an 11 run game? And what we're going to do is try to figure out with 99% confidence what the average margin of victory was for Major League Baseball games for the entire year. So my X bar, my average, if you add them up, I told you was 3.93 runs. My standard deviation in this example or this sample, 2.66. And my N, how many games were there? 190, which means my degrees of freedom is uh, 189. So what we need to do is figure out my error. Oh, before I do that though, to get an error, I need a critical value. So my critical confidence level, excuse me, is 99%. And my T sub C, how do you find that again? You need to go back to your blue sheet. And this time, instead of 90%, I need 99%. And be careful, just 99, not the far right column, which is 0.999. That's 99.9%. .9%. So just 0.99. And what's your degrees of freedom this time? 189. You're going to find that that number is not on your table. So there's a little note. On the very bottom of this table, it says, for degrees of freedom not on the table, use the closest one that is smaller. So you need to go, what's the smallest number? Or the, okay, the next closest number to 189, that's smaller than it. It's 100. So you're actually going to look at the degrees of freedom of 100 on this problem. And over to the 99% confidence column, which then your critical value is going to be 2.626. So that's how you go about finding your critical value. And now it's just the same thing we did before. Can you find your error? Because in the end, that's all you're doing. Critical value is 2.626 times your standard deviation, which is 2.66. And you divide all that by the square root of n. And when you do all that calculation, you get 0.51. So then you just need to build your interval. Now, I don't have the formulas written here, but it's x bar minus your error. So my x bar is 3.93 minus my error. And then it's the x bar plus your error. And you will end up getting your interval. So when you add and subtract the 0.51, you end up getting 3.42 to 4.44. And now you're not done. You need to write yourself a statement. All right? So how does this work again? With what kind of confidence? 99% confidence this time. We're really confident. That's why we 
confidence. What are we talking about? The average margin of victory, because that's what we're talking about. In Major League Baseball in 2012 is between, and then you write your answer, 3.42 and 4.44 runs per game. So there are two examples for you to kind of look at and work through uh, for this uh, average mean. You're, what you're doing is you're building a confidence interval. We're trying to use a sample and then project out, hey, what is the average for my entire population? And then make sure you write a sentence at the end. You will do that for every single problem you have on a test on Chapter 8 test. So come on Monday ready to discuss 8.1 and 8.2. Here's the assignment we're going to work on. Hopefully you all have a wonderful day.